you have a great Aussie road trip to suggest or a great Aussie travel product you would like us to road test, we would love to hear from you. This trip from Broome to Marble Bar across the Simpson Desert to Alice Springs has a beauty of its own and to be found nowhere else in Australia. But as beautiful as it is, it is probably the most dangerous you'll ever undertake. For if one does not follow some simple rules, first, a reliable 4x4 vehicle is a must. Second, extra fuel must be carried. And although there is quite a number of water bores on the track, extra water is essential. These precautions should be taken when everyone travels the outback of Australia. But that says it's access to the property only, which it shouldn't. Tracks a lot to get across to this to the tilt. Oh, and there is one more thing. Always let someone know where you're going and when you should arrive. This took us over 2,000 kilometres of desert tracks across the Great Sandy and Gibson Deserts between Broome in Western Australia and Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. An old Toyota mate of ours heard about the expedition and refused to let us go unless he came along with his diesel-powered old 55 wagon. Day one, at 7.30 a.m. start from Marble Bar, reaching the National Park around 2 p.m. The journey proper began in Marble Bar, famous for being the hottest town in Australia in summer, but it was pleasantly cool when we were there. From Marble Bar to Alice's 2,000 k's of nothing but sand hills, spinifex, rocks, washaways, minimal water supplies and only one fuel depot near Well 33 on the infamous Canning Stock Route. The year 2000's Big Wet caused additional difficulties because many of the desert tracks we intended to use were underwater, an odd paradox in the desert. The flooding situation forced us to make many detours rather than chop up wet tracks which no one likes to do. The locals were taking advantage of the big wet giving normally dusty equipment a much needed scrub down. We travelled east on the Telfer Mine Road then took the stony and sandy tracks that lead into the Rudell River National Park, Australia's largest national park. Most years the expected rainfall in this part of Australia is 4 to 5 inches in the old scale or 10 to 14 centimetres. Even with this small amount of rain, the wildflowers are spectacular. The rainfall this year is many more times the annual rainfall and this has turned the desert into a magnificent sea of colour. Camels are not indigenous to Australia. They were brought here to carry supplies across the many Australian deserts and have flourished in these surroundings. The Middle East, the original home of these camels, is now importing these camels back from Australia because of the isolation in this great country has kept them disease free. Day two, departing from the National Park at 7.30 a.m. and reach our destination of Well 33 around 4 p.m. From the Rudell River, we met the Talawana track just south of the well that gave us plenty of much needed top up water and a shaded lunch spot. The most demanding sand driving on this trip was on the Canning Stock Route, which we followed from Well 22 to Well 33, a three-day run over sand ridges, salt flats and rocky outcrops. The turbo diesels handled the sand hills in high range with a very few engine revs needed. They climbed quite happily with less than 3,000 rpm on the taco and would crest hills as low as 1,500 rpm on the taco. The excellent engine torque 
of the turbo diesels pulled them over the sand ridges without any effort at all and there was no vehicle stress and we did no track damage. The tricky bit on the canning is picking the right tyre pressure. Low pressure is good for floating over the soft sand, but low pressure is bad when it comes to the rocky parts because there is a risk of sidewall damage. Both Toyotas did the canning without needing much reduction in tyre pressures at all. Most of the wells along the stock route are in ruins, but Well 26 was restored to its original condition in 1983. There is a visitor's book at the well, and we recorded our visit. 24th of February 2000, left Halls Creek two and a half weeks ago. Weather been wet, but reasonably cool. Lots of water about, some of detours needed. Heading down to Lake Disappointment, then back to Talawana Track, into Route Island National Park, then on to Newman, if possible. Solo, Chris Jackson, brave lad. <laughs> Geomorphologists tell us that Australia's sand ridges have not moved much for the last two million years. They are not Sahara type sand hills without vegetation, but are generally covered with shrubbery. And where they aren't, it's usually because of the bushfires that race wind driven across the sand plains until they burn out. Both the Hilux and the Prado have independent front suspension and we were interested to see how they would cope with the severe corrugations we came across. But we had no mechanical trouble, no steering dramas and no implication of shock absorber failure at all. The phone box near Well 33 is well known but not so well known as the fact that there is now a fuel depot at the nearby Aboriginal community. Fuel was a major concern for us, but the turbo diesels used less than we expected, so we only had to put 90 litres in each tank. The Hilux had averaged less than 11 litres per 100 kilometres, and the Prado averaged 11.5. That is not much difference from their fuel consumption on the highway, giving both vehicles excellent off-road operating range. An unexpected surprise at Well 33 was the demise of the windmill and bath that used to be a famous landmark at this spot. There is also a new boss at Well 33, a busted bird who refuses to give ground and insists you camp somewhere else. Time to get a bit of computing done and settle in for the night. Day three, we left well 33 at 7.30 a.m. heading for Jupiter Well, arriving around 2 p.m. Next morning, we came across Len Bedell's survey mark at Gary Junction, confirming our position. That was handy because the shortcut from well 33 to Gary Junction is not shown on most maps. This is Bedell's, this is all his markings. Yeah. Alice Springs, 630 oh. miles, Sandy Blight Junction, 320 miles. Yeah, that's Len Bedell, yeah. that's May 1963. Marker. Here's Bedell's marker, Ella. Look at this. Our next stop on the desert highway was Jupiter Wells, where our peaceful camp was invaded by a greater crew. We talked them into a beer or two and thanked them for their road making efforts since the wet. It was also time for our crew to have a general wash up.
Day four was a big day. Starting at 6 a.m., we headed for the Alice, arriving that night around 7 p.m. Make sure the water hole is clean when you leave and don't use dishwashing detergents or oils in the water or you may prevent the locals from having a drink when you leave and this could lead to a disaster. This old truck used to belong to Len Bedell who made most of the tracks in this area of Australia. These tracks help the desert if travellers stick to them and don't run all over the place cutting new tracks into the sand dunes and making them susceptible to erosion, it will help preserve the desert. As we travel these last few kilometres of what has been for all the crew, yet another great Aussie adventure. We would like to share a few additional but vital bits of information. If one does get lost or breaks down, stick to the track and you'll have a good chance of being found. In the case of a breakdown, do not leave your vehicle. Do not try to do this trip alone, and if possible, try to take an experienced bushman with you. These Australian deserts are like a patient predator waiting for you to make a mistake. Here we are at last. Wonderful Alice Springs awaiting us with long for showers, real beds with fresh linen.